All right, so uh, let's, say, uh, let's lay down some ground rules. This is an entirely unfocused immediate review. I write these reviews after watching, so I come into it with whatever comes to mind, what I think is interesting, what works, what doesn't. Uh, and so what I say here could change, but these are immediate reviews based on what it is people request. I watch on Thursday, write on Friday, and try and get it published for Sunday. All right, so let's talk about the sky crawlers. My frame of reference when discussing or seeing discussion regarding Mamoru Oshii has largely been part of three camps. He's either the unclear symbolism machine who made Angel's Egg, the mind behind the filmic machine films like Pat Labor or Ghost in the Shell, or he's a major visionary of more comedic animated works like Urusa Yatsira and uh, Gozenzo Samba Banbanzai. There's also a fourth section of folks who look at Oshi's older works like the Kuro Zenzetsu series and the whole Red Spectacles universe, but I think that's more of a testament to Oshi's interesting body of work more than anything negative. I watched Skycrawlers years ago, uh, many years ago. I, I don't remember the context in watching it, but I remember being really bored of it. I hated the pacing and whatnot. Now, now that I'm older, I'm still a little annoyed by the feel, but I understand it more and what it wants to do. And in that lens, I think it's interesting. Skycrawlers feels like a Miyazaki response, but in a really Oshi kind of way. It's set in this universe where developmentally stunted children fight in these aerial dogfights in lieu of war. So there's this emphasis on flying machines. And I know this is based off a novel, but the way in which it depicts this kind of machinery is really recollective of the super technical aspects that you see in something like a Miyazaki film. But while Miyazaki's depiction of flying machines is oftentimes these leviathans of steel and steam that glide through air, like Powell's Moving Castle, you see the birds glide through air. Or in like Pocoroso, they're like people standing with a camera on the ground looking at RC airplanes, you know? There's this distinct body of them. Oshi's depiction of the planes in the sky crawlers is, or at least it seems, distinctly disorienting. There's this focus on depiction in relation to the space as like jello. It moves and warps and distorts because the body of the person that operates as the camera spins around the world. There's sections where you just don't get a good idea of what's up or down. And when it shows planes from afar, there's less of that for technical fetishism and more of them as far off devices. The whole film is fixated on limited music. There's a recurring motif by, I assume, Kenji Kawai that keeps playing. And it's interesting because that song at first plays for like a time or two. And I'm like, okay, yeah, that's, that's, that's cool. But and then it keeps playing. And it starts to get diegetic. Like the machines start playing that song. So it starts to form this psychical link between us and the film and the internal logic and presentation of the film itself and us watching it. So there's a sort of like Omolas theme in Skycrawlers, which gets spelled out a bit more later that I feel sort of focuses the tension of the movie. So Omolas is a story about how there's this shining city that accounts and does everything, but there's a secret, and that it's upheld through the misery of a single child. And what happens is people learn about the child, and they make a choice. Some walk away, others stay, hence the name of the story. There are moments in the Skycrawlers where it feels like we're looking at it from the, from the perspective of the child of Omolas. Enough is enough! 
いそうなんかじゃないかわいそうなんかじゃない同情なんかであいつを侮辱するな The children are effectively people left out to die. This whole world has lost its desire for war, but not war. They want conflict and its ritual. And we sit around and watch with rapt enjoyment of the conflict in the sky crawlers. Like we watch a lot like the people hold up in the bars watching the TVs. And so earlier, when I mentioned I understand or I think I understand it a lot more, I think this makes up a lot of the. At least my critical engagement I'm having with this film because the empty stretches of space, this constant musicless and Spartan background, it feels so minimal and minuscule. There's small moments of characterization, but it's never impressed into the background. Like you don't usually see how they interact with their dorms, their fighter planes, like none of that. The place feels overly sterile. And I think it's partly because it gets punctured with a wall of noise that becomes the dogfights. Like these moments earlier form the arresting explosion of sound that makes us go, okay, wow, you know, awesome action. But that's like precisely what everybody in the movie is doing and being criticized for. <laughs> It makes an argument that, you know, war is rough and brutal, but it's also like a spectacle. And we have to understand what that implies for the people stuck in it. The children of Omolas who are stuck upholding the institution of the shining city that ends up being peace, because that's what it is. That's the Omolas, peace. But it doesn't just tell us, it performs to us. It's Interesting that nothing really gets resolved in a large setting. The dogfights continue, he's lost his sense of memories, but there's this emphasis on really incremental approaches to the issue. At least is what I got out of it watching the skycrawlers.